Hey there, fellas. Are you guys ready for some new experiments? Today we're going to be doing something slightly... I don't know. In my opinion, we'll be doing something really interesting. I'm sure you've all seen videos of people having fun throwing big magnets into rivers, lakes and swamps, and retrieving all sorts of stuff from various different places. This got us thinking. Magnets obviously stick nicely to a metal surface. And when you stick two such magnets of opposite polarity to each other, you most likely won't even be able to pull them apart. But what if you were to flip them around and try joining with each other two ends with identical polarity? They'll start pushing each other away with considerable force. Which brings us to our idea. Why don't we make ourselves a magnetic suspension? And so right away we went looking for a store that sells magnets. Okay, so we've found ourselves a few magnets, which require 600 kilos of force to pull apart. So three, perhaps even four pairs of these magnets should easily support the weight of a car. All right, guys. Today I suggest we put together a magnetic suspension and see exactly what it's capable of. Let's do this. DIY magnetic suspension. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Let's see how you handle this. How do I get this thing off? Use a jack. Right. There we go. Well, aren't you sneaky? Of course I am. That's how you do it. That's not fair. Using a tool. How else was I supposed to get the damn thing off? I at least tried using my bare hands. They're being pulled together. Okay, now they're stuck to each other. Let me just run you through what we've done here, fellas. You saw everything for yourselves, of course, but I haven't told you a word about what's going on. Anyway, when we first placed these two bars with their sets of magnets next to each other, after securing them with some makeshift retainers, we brought them towards each other and then... You see, the rims from these magnets are made from plain old steel, given that these are used for recovering stuff. So in case it falls and hits something, or sticks to something with too much force, the thing is that when you hit a magnet, it tends to fall apart, which isn't a good thing. So these rims are made specifically to keep them from breaking. Anyway, so when you bring these magnets together, they push each other away up until a certain point, and then they slightly shift relative to each other. It should be said that the shift occurs with quite a bit of force, and when that happens, the rim on one magnet attaches itself to the other magnet. As you just saw, we've already put some guide pins in there, so now I guess we bring them together and see what happens. Figure out whether this suspension is going to work or not.
Okay, so I've lowered the car, and to be completely honest, I am a tad upset. Initially, we were thinking that these 600 kilogram magnets are more than up to the task, but 600 kilos turns out to be the pulling force. It doesn't seem like they exert the same kind of force when pushing each other apart. With eight magnets installed, this car has basically gone down as far as it can go. The gap between the magnets is no more than, say, 10 mil. We didn't do any precise measurements, but that's what it looks like from over here. You can see that the suspension does have a bit of travel to it. I took a quick look under there while the guys were rocking the car up and down. You can tell that the magnets aren't coming into contact. There isn't a ton of articulation, but it's obvious that the magnets aren't touching. Let's take this outside and see how the car behaves on the road. All right, driving over the first few potholes. So far it seems to work okay. Well... It actually works. Wait a minute. We do have a bit of a problem. You can tell right away that the car isn't running any shocks. We didn't fit shock absorbers in the back. Nice. This is pretty neat. What if I hit the brakes? I'm assuming the guides will pop out. Then again, they are pretty long. We actually thought about how to prevent any unexpected setbacks. Now this road is even more beat up. Check this out. I actually really like it. Although we do need to install some shocks. What's with the noise? These magnets actually do a good job at managing these bumps. This is great, though we are in dire need of some shocks. We could really use some shock absorbers. Otherwise, the suspension is pretty nice, and the magnets aren't even touching each other. You can't hear any metal-on-metal -metal contact, and you don't feel any violent jolts going on, like when a conventional suspension reaches the bump stops. Here you don't get any of that. Fantastic. Now I suggest we go for a drive on the local scenic road. Right, looks like the magnets are coming into contact on this surface. Or so it seems, at least. We're navigating some really rough terrain here. The road is basically non-existent. Anyway, it looks like we... When we were putting the suspension together, a lot of thought went into how exactly we placed the magnets. We could have stuck two pairs on one corner and another on the opposite corner, but for some reason we decided... Then again, we specifically placed all of the magnets in the middle, due to the shape of this car's underbelly. What the hell? Why does the transmission keep popping out of gear? Right, that's much better. Okay, so it actually works quite nicely. If we were to beef this suspension up a bit, say if we were to use not 8 magnets, but 16 for example, or maybe even 24, or some other even amount, it does look like we won't get a ton of suspension travel. It's no surprise that some eggheads came up with electromagnetic suspensions, as opposed to a purely magnetic setup. Fantastic! Oh, wow! The rear end is hopping like crazy. But generally speaking, it is getting the job done. These magnets are actually doing a great job. My suspension is working beautifully, you hear me? It is having a hard time on these kinds of potholes, though. Okay, time for us to head back. All right, it looks like the magnets are all intact. And it looks like there's a slight bend in the beam. I'm pretty sure it's down to us using a pretty strong set of magnets. Plus, the steel section itself is not what you'd call stout. Before we headed out, I was worried that we might smash the magnets themselves. But they look okay, which is nice. We tried taking one of these magnets apart, just to have a look at its inner workings. We used an angle grinder to cut the rim, we cut right up to the magnet itself, assuming that removing the rim would make it a bit stronger. But we decided not to tear the whole thing apart, since that could have easily led to it breaking. 
All in all, this setup works. I actually didn't hear too much knocking from back here. This actually seems to be a pretty good idea. Magnetic suspension is a pretty awesome thing. But this one isn't quite where we want it, given the sort of magnets that we're using. Right, fellas. That's all I have for you. But we're still left with a set of magnets. So you guys go ahead and send in a few suggestions on how we can use them. If anybody knows how to make some sort of nanotechnology electromagnetic suspension, send us some blueprints. We might actually put something together. I mean, even with these magnets, the suspension does work to some extent. But we should definitely cook up something new. Okay, that's it for today's episode. Yeah, we could definitely do with something a bit more powerful. Anyway, leave some comments and suggestions, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. All right, catch you later.